Good morning. Welcome to uh, this lesson today. This is uh, we're going to be covering lessons in Proverbs today. Uh, this is lesson number six. Lesson number six in the, in the book of Proverbs. And so we're going to cover today um, Proverbs chapter three, verses eighteen through twenty. Uh, might go further. Don't know. Um, we're going to cover some uh, some interesting uh, thoughts today. And and here we have. Um, a subject of knowledge and wisdom, okay, and and where it comes from, who it belongs to. Uh, so the overall topic of this lesson is the author of all wisdom and knowledge um, is God. He, he is the author of all wisdom and knowledge. It is God. It belongs to him. And no matter what mankind thinks, uh, the author of all wisdom and knowledge, everything that mankind knows comes from God, okay? It belongs to him, all right? Many, many people want to discount the fact that he, uh, he exists today, but he is the maker and creator and the consistor of all things that we know, okay? It belongs to God. Let's say a quick word of prayer, and then we will get started in this lesson. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are all things. And Lord, you are the creator of all things. All things consist through you. All things continue through you. Um, you created all things. All things belong to you. Oh Lord, please open this lesson to us that we may understand and comprehend your word today. And in your name, Jesus, amen. Now, let's take a, a look at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 18 through 20, okay? She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. Happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up. The clouds drop down the dew. Okay? So we have some of the most beautiful verses here that explain wisdom and knowledge. The wisdom and knowledge that belongs to the Lord, which is beyond, pretty much beyond our comprehension. Mankind's been on this earth now for a long time. And to this day, we truly don't understand the heavens. We don't understand all that's around us, the air. We don't understand how things consist and continue. But we live here, and we live here by the good pleasure of the Lord. Okay? God is the author of all wisdom and knowledge. And as we learn and develop as mankind, we understand more about God. Okay? God is the author of all wisdom and knowledge. Now, these verses here are just a teaser of what we're going to learn throughout the book of Proverbs. Um, and they're a teaser for the verses in chapter 8, uh, verses 22 through 31, chapter 8, verses 22 through 31, where it states, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was brought, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandments, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. So the verses we're talking about today are just a teaser for these verses here I just read. 
All right. So Solomon here in chapter eight goes into greater depth on God's wisdom and knowledge. All right. So these verses today, which we're covering verses 18 through 20, are just a teaser for these verses here in chapter eight. If you enjoy the Bible, verses like these here, um, they tend to excite you because you're like, you read them and you're like in awe of what is shown to you, okay? They excite you because you're reading about God, okay? And you're, you're in awe of who he is and, and what he has done for you. Um, so you're, you're, you're like, wow, he made the stars also. He made the earth and all that was here. And the book of Genesis says, he made those stars also. It's like he just cast them out there. He made the stars also. It took no thought. He just cast them out there because he knew what needed to be already. All right, it's amazing. All right, you're reading, um, you're reading about God, okay, and you're you're amazed at what He has done, okay. So so it's it's almost as if as an afterthought. He threw the stars out there, but he put all his time and effort on earth, mankind, and everything that was here, okay? So God put time, he put effort to mankind. He put time and effort into all plant life, animals, the earth. What does mankind want to do, okay? <laughs> we want to leave the earth and run off to the stars that he threw out there as an afterthought, okay? All right, quite silly if you really begin to consider it because God put his time and effort into what we have here. But we're not satisfied with that. We want to run off to the stars. Verse 19, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, okay? The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. So wisdom is the right use of knowledge. We've discussed this in the past. So from this, we come to, we can see the role of wisdom, the wisdom that's in God in the creation of the earth, okay, the role of it. This divine wisdom, it is this wisdom by which the creator God used to create the atom, the very atom. Everything is made up of atoms, okay? Used to create the very atom and how the atom holds things together, how things consist and stay together, okay? How they continue, all right? This holding is done by the express power of God, the Son, Jesus Christ, okay? He is the Word. He is the author of all wisdom, okay? He, he, he still, at this point, permeates the whole of creation and, and causes it to, to stick, <laughs> to consist, to continue, okay? Without Him, there's nothing that was not made that was made. He made all things, okay? And so it's it kind of hard to comprehend when you start talking about this, this deep depth of, of a well here that we're getting to dive into, all right? It's very deep. So this is the perfect example for us um, to live by wisdom that, that God has given that is found in the Bible, okay? It's found in God's word, all right? To live by this wisdom, <clears throat> and to imitate the Lord in all that we do, okay? All right, to trust in his word and what he's given us so that we can understand what our purpose of life is. <clears throat> and we need to conform to his will in a divinely appointed, appointed creation order that he's created, okay? The laws of nature, okay? Those are created by God, all right? So God laid the foundation for the earth like a master builder, okay, would lay the foundation for a building. So, so it, it, the earth and all that exists here is very unique, okay? It's not like any other planet. No matter how hard we look throughout all space and time, the earth is unique, okay, in its order. In Job chapter 38, verses four through seven, where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Mankind has no understanding, okay? And I love this statement here in Job because it goes so well to all those people who think they know that they know because they don't know. They absolutely don't know what God knows. God created all that we understand and know. And we know a minuscule of what he created, all right? Who hath hid the measures thereof? 
if thou knowest, okay? So please, if you're the one that rules or that you've got this ruler or you've got a reed like they use in the old day, old days to measure with, okay? Please, please, declare if you knowest or who hath stretched the line upon it? Say, who said this is the length? Who said this was the plumb line? Who said that the, the air would stay here and space would be here, that the water would be here? Who said, okay? Who laid the foundation or circumference of the earth, okay? Who, okay? Where upon are the foundations thereof fastened, okay? So where's the cornerstone for all of this? So is it the gravitational pull that God put in the sun that sort of holds this from spinning off out into space and nothingness and we all freeze to death, okay? Who, who would put the cornerstone here, okay? It was God. We know it was God, okay? All right? Who, so... Who or who laid the cornerstone thereof when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? When God created everything in the very beginning of time, before anything of us existed, okay? And as he created, and all the sons of God shouted for joy as they watched him create, okay? Were we there? No, we were not. We were not there in any way, shape, or form, okay? Man is minuscule, okay? He was not there. So all creation testifies to God's sovereignty and power. God is saying, puny man, please tell me if thou hast even, even the basis, the basic of understanding of all this. And we don't. We absolutely don't, okay? We have to trust in God, okay? Because he holds things together. He causes the atoms to stick together. All right. <clears throat> the people of today don't acknowledge God on this earth. Okay. Uh, they don't recognize God as the creator of the world, even though things around us cannot be explained. And mankind keeps searching with his science to understand. But a lot of things can't be explained because man won't acknowledge God. If he could acknowledge God and, and God's entirety, then he begin to understand, and then he could begin to explain. So instead, instead what mankind does, they heap to themselves vain imaginations, okay, that lead them down a path of self-deceit. Creation and life screams, it screams at you there's a God. When you look at all the different types of trees, and when you look at all the different types of animals and their designs, okay, the way they do the things they do. When you look at all the mankind and the differences with each, each person that's, that's created on this earth, when you look at the air, when you look at the sun, when you look at the grass, when you look at everything that's out there, it screams God. It screams a creator, all right? In Romans chapter 1, verse 22, it states this unique words, professing themselves, talk about mankind here, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, <laughs> okay? Mankind has lost sight of the unique majesty of God, which can clearly be seen within all creation. It is as if mankind is completely blind and they cannot see. They walk around in darkness every day doing the things they do and they cannot see, okay? All right, your eyes are closed if you don't believe in God. Okay, you cannot see. In Psalms 104, verses 1 through 5, is another um, great set of verses that covers this 104, verses 1 through 5. Okay. Blessed, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, 
who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. That's God, okay? All right, folks, that's God. This psalm here reminds us of the fact that God owns all things. Uh, it was he that created. He stretched out the heavens and continually stretches out the space that we know, okay? All right, he laid the foundation of the earth and mankind cannot move it. Mankind cannot even stop the rain this, that comes. Mankind cannot stop the storms that come, okay? Mankind can't do anything about it. All mankind can do is just live here, okay? That's what mankind can do, all right? So mankind is so blind today, so blind, okay? All this is hidden from mankind. God states, declare if thou hast understanding, okay? Mankind has no understanding, okay? Liberal, humanistic mankind, okay? No understanding. Anyone who rejects God, rejects a creator, has zero understanding, all right? Uh, Proverbs 3, verse 19, by understanding hath he established the understand the heavens, okay? By understanding the wisdom that God has, hath he established the heavens. God created the heavens. He had a purpose for what he created in the heavens, okay? All right? He had a purpose for the sun, for the moon, for all of that. And you can read it in the Bible. It's there, okay? All right? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament by the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years, okay? All the stars, okay? that we look, we can see signs, season, days, years, all of that. It helps us with time, all right? All right, for mankind. Verse 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Light, okay? So I don't like being in the dark, okay? I like light, okay? Light's nice, all right? And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, okay? He made the stars also, okay? You think about that. It's amazing, all right? Um, so I, I, I have always been amazed by this verse right here where he just made the stars also, okay? When you read the creation account, God placed order and natural laws in place for our universe, okay? So that things stick together. All the atoms stick together, okay? You would want to come apart. It would really suck, okay? All right? So God took his wisdom and his understanding of his omniscience, okay, his omnipresence, okay, his, and he created by day our earth and our solar system. He created it, okay, by day, all right? So then as an afterthought, God creates all the other stars and constellations out there just to mystify mankind, okay, okay, declare mankind if thou hast understanding we don't okay we look out there in amazement at all the stuff that's out there just amazing okay all right and all god did was like okay i'm gonna create some stars just like that okay and it was done but we look at it and we're amazed by it we're mystified by it and we think wow there might be there should be another planet out there and all those planets no god created one planet okay where the cross of christ was planted it's this planet, folks. That is it, okay? He created the stars also, like that, all right? So, Isaiah 42, verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, He that created the heavens stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth, that which cometh out of it, okay? He giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. Who can know the east from the west? We, we can't know, folks. We don't understand this, okay? Everybody wants to try and say, oh, we came from a tadpole in a dirty bunch of water, and then the tadpole decided he was going to jump out and grow some legs, okay? And then he decided, oh, I'm, I'm done beating this way, so I'm going to grow a tail and throw it in a tree and jump up there in the tree, you know, and spin around for a little bit and grow some arms and legs, and then, whoo, I'm going to jump down and go to college and learn and become a man. Stupidness, you know, absolute stupidness, okay? Isaiah 40, verses 21 through 22. Have ye not known? 
Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understanding? No, have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of earth. It's God, folks. The clouds are the dust of his feet, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. We're, we're just ants, okay? We're nothing, all right? Okay? He that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Folks, okay, we dwell on this planet, okay, under the divine providence and protection of God, folks. Man, if people only understood, if mankind would just turn to God's word and trust in it and put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he would understand. He would understand. When I read through scriptures like these, I get a sense of awe and wonder. And I wonder, who am I? Who am I to even speak this word, okay? Who am I to even speak this word, <laughs> okay? I am always amazed by what is in the Bible, the understanding where space stretches or is stretched out by God. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. We cannot comprehend, okay, as human beings on this earth unless you go to God's word. Einstein's general relativity theory explained the expansion of space that was never fully applied until Georges Lemaitre stated that universe stretched and expanded. Alexander Friedman and Howard Robertson also expanded on the thought of the expansion of space. The theory overall was generalized by Arthur Walker in 1936. The Hubble Space Telescope was helped to explain the expansion of space, okay? What amazes me, okay, what amazes me is that mankind could have just turned to the Bible to find out, okay, the, the, this, this issue, okay? It was here already in the Bible, okay? All right, so, so the Christian always says, okay, do you know that is in the Bible? Okay, uh, I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, we just found this out. I said, well, that's been in the Bible. I already knew that, okay? And they look at me like, whoa, what's wrong with this guy, you know? I mean, and that's the faith and trust that we have as Christians in the Bible, okay? That's the faith, faith and trust that we have in the Bible, all right? Okay, so Christians are not surprised at scientific achievements, okay? But scientific achievements just reaffirm the truth of the Bible, Okay. Uh, I will usually say, uh, well, that is also in the Bible, okay? It's also in the Bible, all right? That's why you should tell people, you know, that's in the Bible. Okay, you can find it there, all right? So Christians are amazed by scientific achievements. Wisdom played a dynamic part in the creation of the universe. By it, God changed chaos into order, okay, into order. This is the same thing that happens to any society or lost person who puts their trust in God, who puts their faith in Jesus Christ, the chaos in their soul becomes order, okay? Your worry changes to faith, and you trust that God's in control. You no longer fear the world, but what you fear is God. You respect him and reverence him, and you're in awe of him, okay? You understand who he is, okay? Can, can anyone truly understand God? No, you cannot. Can you know him? Yes, you can know him, okay? But you can never understand him. You never fully understand him, okay? There's no, no possible way. All right, so you can get an understanding of him, okay? Get an understanding. But can you truly understand him? No, okay? Can you know him? Yes, okay? All right, you know him through his son, Jesus Christ. He is, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. All right, so Proverbs chapter 3, verse 20 by his knowledge, the depths are broken up, so the springs come forth where they are supposed to. God flooded the world at one time when all the depths were broken up, which is pretty scary if you think about that. If you break up all the depths, you, you loose the water that confines the water on the earth, it would, it would cover everything, okay? All right, and that's already happened. 
and the clouds drop down the dew, okay? So dew comes down, okay? God lets the dew and the rain fall, okay, on the just and the unjust. The process of evaporation happens as God had designed, where rain and dew falls as it's supposed to on the righteous and the unrighteous, the just and the unjust, okay? All right, throughout the world, where it's supposed to fall, okay? The process of evaporation seems like such a simple thing, but water continues, okay, on this earth. Think about it, okay, through the process of evaporation, all right, okay? It seems like a simple thing, but the design and process by which wind currents take moisture around the world, where in some places there are rainforests and other places there are deserts. This is very, very unique. Some places you have more moisture, in other places, you have more dry air, okay, or air that's very dry. Man declares that he knows through his science and his witty inventions, but what man likes is the fear of God and true wisdom and prudence. We lack that completely, okay? Proverbs uh, chapter 8, verse 12, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty, witty inventions, all right? You and I live in a universe that is tremendously orderly and of a divine design from God, all right? I find it interesting that there is such clarity in God's word about science when you apply God's word to science. The science of mankind becomes extremely clear when you apply God's word to it. I also find it quite interesting that everyone who studies the laws of nature and probes into the secrets of the universe is not brought to the realization that we live in a universe that could not just have happened, okay? That's what amazes me, is you got all these people out there that, that study, go to college for this stuff, okay? And when they come out of college, they've got all these degrees, you know, master's degrees, doctorates, you know, and they have no understanding. They're like, oh, I can't figure this out. And they're not led to God's word to figure it out strange. Not everyone is brought to that realization. It's almost as if, okay, it's almost as if their eyes are blinded by the God of this world, as the Bible also states, okay? If it did just happen, how and when did it happen, okay? Where is the chicken that hatched that first egg, okay? All right? The universe is so orderly that the universe screams God. It screams God, folks. There's no other answer, all right? Now, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, okay? It is so clear, all right, so clear. God's laws, create such order that mankind can build a rocket, put men in it, send it to space, land it on the moon, unmanned or manned, and then come back, okay? That's order, folks, all right? Man thinks he's so smart with his witty inventions. He thinks he's so smart, okay? But he doesn't understand the order that God's placed there so that mankind is allowed to do things like that. And in my mind, I say, why does mankind even want to do something like that? Because of the fact everything we need is right here on the earth, okay? That's what kills me, all right? So he thinks he's so smart. All that man has done in all of the satellites, all of the robots, and on all the planets they've placed robots, even the ones that they pushed, satellites they pushed way out beyond our universe now, okay? All right, and all that he has done all that mankind has done is discover the laws of God that keep the entire universe running like a computer or like a clock. That's all that mankind's done. They've found on life, okay? They've hypothesized on life since the earliest of days, saying, oh, there's life on Mars. And what we found is zero life on Mars, all right? Zero life on the moon, zero life on Saturn, zero life on Pluto, okay? But mankind keeps looking, keeps saying, oh, yeah, there's, there's other life out there. No, there's life on earth. That is it, okay? All right? To many people, okay, they've gotten caught up in the lie of mankind that things just happened, okay? All right? 
If it just happened, things would not be so orderly, folks. It's Green's God, okay? Things would not operate so precisely. It screams God. The reasons why mankind can send things to other planets, to all places on the earth, is because of the very precise laws that God established in creation. That's what it is, right? God's wisdom created and made all things. We need to recognize the intelligence of God. I believe that if we acknowledged him each day, that he would direct our paths. That's what he would do, okay? If only we would acknowledge him and all his ways, our lives and this world would begin to straighten out, okay? All the crime would begin to end. All of the, the evil stuff, all of the, the, the child prostitution, all of the, the wicked, evil stuff in this world would stop. It would stop, okay? All right? We need to recognize the intelligence of God. God's wisdom created and made all things, folks. We need to be in God's school, which is God's word. He teaches us to honor our father and mother. He teaches us to raise up our children in the nurture and admonition of God, to love our families, to be proper adults, to live a right life on this earth. And all we have right now on this earth is wickedness and evil and sin. I believe that wisdom comes from God and belongs to God. Proverbs 8, verse 22, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way and before his works of old. Through Jesus Christ, all things were created and by him, there is not anything made that was made. Okay, okay. He made all things. Jesus Christ did. Folks, so much can be said about the wisdom that comes from knowing God, about what's in God's word. We need to humble ourselves and recognize that he is in charge of all things. We need to praise and thank him for our existence, okay? Daily, okay? Thank him for all the things we have. Thank him for all the goodness and all the providence he provides to us. We need to be in his word every day, and we need to be in prayer every day to him. Thank you for listening, folks. Hope you have a good day.